Hey everybody, it's Rob with Cherry City Guns and Ammo, and today we're taking a look at the brand new Smith & Wesson 350. <laughs> Stick around. All right, up first we're going to do the unboxing portion of it. I want to do this with you guys here uh, while the gun's been unfired. And I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, it has two been fired. We saw it in the intro. Well, that's because I haven't filmed the intro yet. Through the magic of editing, I can do this first and show it later on. There's not really a whole lot to do with the unboxing because there's not a whole lot in here. But there it is. My beautiful 350 Legend. Other than that, the only other things are in the box is your goofy cable lock, a safety and instruction manual, uh, some like, you know, warranty registration, and your keys for your Hillary hole, and last but not least, moon clips, because this is fired from a moon clip. So this is a seven shot gun. It is has a ported barrel, you can see the port there. Um, and because it is using a rimless cartridge, you have to fire it with moon clips. Let me take this little block out of there. Now here's my first gripe. This is a pretty high dollar gun. The price point is pretty extremely high. And they sent two moon clips. I was hoping there'd be at least five. Um, I think it's kind of bizarre that they would only send you two moon clips with this gun, with the price point being what it is. Uh, I think that's kind of cheap. And on top of that, not only do they only send you two moon clips, but they don't have them for sale on their website or anywhere else. So they're not supporting their new product at all. And that has unfortunately been kind of a trend lately. I bought the uh, Smith & Wesson 2.0, the M&P 2.0 10 millimeter back in December. And here we are in August and uh, finding spare mags for that is almost impossible. And they're doing the same thing with moon clips with the 350 legend uh, however tkcustom.com they have moon clips for it i've already ordered a pack of them you can get five of them for 40 bucks through them so i will have seven moon clips which should be pretty sufficient uh, i'm just really surprised with how chintzy they are that you're only getting two of them with this high a price point revolver so that's pretty much for the unboxing portion of it because there's really nothing in here. It's a basic, basic box. It's not like my uh, Performance Center 500 Magnum where it came with a nice, uh, you know, padded soft case. This is the same case that like my 629 and my M&P came in. It's a basic, basic box. It's not really meant for this big of a gun. You can see here where the plastic's lighter in color because that's where the cylinder is and it's pushed out and actually caused that part of the case to warp and that's why it's lighter in color because it's bent it um, so they didn't really provide a sufficient box for it so I, I have some first impressions on this gun that I was really super excited for um, that aren't super spectacular but we'll move on to the shooting and checking out some of the other stuff and uh, see what we think of it from there all right so that was our, our literally our very first shot with this gun I wanted to do with you guys on camera. And one thing I'll say about this gun, it's heavy. I knew it was going to be heavy. It's an X-frame. There's no way it's not going to be heavy. This weighs in at 71 ounces. Uh, the good thing about that is the 350 Legend is already a fairly mild uh, kicking round. And in this, it, it really wasn't much of anything at all. So we've got six rounds left in this. This is a seven-shot revolver. So... Uh, Let's have a little fun here. So that was the, the Scoops TV plate first. Let's go ahead and hit our big silhouette. All right, that flipped our hostage popper. Let's see about hitting our hostage popper. I think I hit just a little low. Oh, a little high. There we go. Yeah, that, that really whipped that around there quickly. Let's go down our uh, plate rack. These sure seem to be hitting hard. Oh, it was already seven rounds. I didn't even realize it. 
So yeah, as mentioned in the unboxing portion that I did right after the intro, these are fed by moon clip. There's another little area of disappointment that I have found uh, with Smith & Wesson. The user manual that came with this was the very generic user and safety manual for the, was it the KL and N frame? Something like KL, yeah. Anyway, it wasn't, didn't have anything to do with the X frame at all and nothing to do with the 350 Legend model, which is only able to be shot with moon clips. If you don't know anything about moon clips, there is no help in that box to help you through that. Um, I immediately, when I knew I was gonna be getting this revolver, I went to TK Customs Online to look for a loader because if you don't know, uh, these spring steel moon clips, usually it's pretty hard to get the rounds snapped into them. And the whole point is you can have all your rounds together, you eject them all together, you load them all in together. It's pretty handy. Um, but I went on TK Custom Online and they don't have the loader, but then they stated these moon clips are actually made so you can load them without using a loading tool. So if you look at the base there, in between the rounds, it's split. On most moon clips, that little portion right there is actually full. So there's a lot less give. So it's actually very, very difficult to load them in. I load these in by hand rather easily. I will do one of those with you on camera so you can see. So that's the good part. The bad part is because they sit, they're so loose, they're real floppy. I mean, they don't, and it, you know, 350 Legend is a long round. You have to really like take your time to get each one of them lined up into their hole before they drops it. It's not horrible. But it's not like if you're use, shooting like a 625 and 45 ACP or like the 929 or one of those 9 mil where they fit in really tight and they're really short cartridges and you just drop them in. That's not happening here. Still, it's a quick way to load and unload and keep all your brass together. So I'm not going to complain too much. Let's do a little more shooting of this beast of a revolver. And uh, then we'll do some other stuff. Let's hit our little spinner down there. We're going to hit the bottom one first. I missed. That didn't spin, but it's because it's touching the ground. Let's see if we can hit the little red one on top. I don't know if I'm hitting low or hitting high, but that's a pretty small little... Oh, there we go. We hit it. Let's see about our hostage popper again. It sure does whip that sucker around. So, yeah. Unloading, no problem at all. They drop right out. It's nice they're all together. I don't have to go picking up brass. I'm going to take you back to the table. I'm going to unload these for you on camera so you can see how difficult it is to unload them. And then we'll load some more up. All right, first we'll go about the unloading. Here are our two moon clips with our spent brass. Um, you don't want to just pry on them because that's probably going to bend your moon clip. So you got to try to pull them off fairly straight. I almost figure if I can stick my finger from the inside so you can put pressure out on the bottom. That's not horrible. And then I kind of figured once the first one is out, they probably get easier from there because it's easier to get a hold of them. And that's not, that's not too bad. It's doable. TK Custom did say, did suggest still buying one of their unloading tools, which I did. That is coming to me. Um, yeah, that first one, just because you don't, well, I got two at once. Um, that first one's kind of a beast. Yeah, once that loading tool, or unloading tool rather, I'm sorry, comes in, this will be a lot easier. But as far as actually loading them up goes, we've got, right now we're shooting some of this Winchester 350 Legend 145 grain full metal jacket. These actually snap in pretty easy. Yeah, so the loading part, that's not bad. I'm only gonna load one more of these up with this, and then we're gonna try some different ammo. And eventually we'll try some, uh, not, not on this video, but in future videos. I cast some good cast lead bullets that I'll, I'll do some hand loads with this and see how it likes those. But see, this is what I was talking about, how floppy this is. You gotta get all those to line up perfectly, which doesn't seem bad if you kind of hold it from the middle so they hang straight down and make sure the gun's perfectly vertical. But, I don't know, that's kind of a pain. The one good thing is, 
what I was doing before when I was shooting is I took like two or three rounds and hooked them inside my pocket because of how long these are. They hang on your pocket rather nicely. So for carrying your reloads, that's kind of cool. All right, so they are marketing this as the ultimate hunting handgun. One thing that I've noticed is it's got a fairly satin finish, kind of a, and it's, it's a little bit glossy. My 500 Smith & Wesson Performance Center is much more of a matte stainless steel, which in my mind makes a lot more sense for something that you're gonna use a, as a hunting handgun. This, as you can see, the, the sun glints off of this finish pretty well, which aesthetically is nice. I really like the look of the finish on this just from, from that area. Uh, but as a hunting handgun, I really wish it had more of a matte finish. Anyway, since it is a hunting handgun, let's see if we can do some stuff at distance. And still, we're still shoot, shooting that 145 grain full metal jacket. And uh, we're looking at our 60 yard silhouette there. So let's see if we can get some shots on at 60 yards. That was pretty easy and it got there quick. So that was our two thirds size silhouette. To the right of it, we've got an eight inch plate. Oh, I just barely missed it there. Oh, that was just high and left. High and left. I'm not sure where that one went. There we go. Not sure where that one went. All right. We'll do some more long range shooting here in a minute, but now we've got a serious test that we're gonna do. We're gonna do some chronograph testing and we're gonna compare this 350 Legend cartridge out of this pistol versus out of a rifle, just so you can see the impact that the barrel length makes. Okay, so uh, this Smith & Wesson 350 is not my first foray into the 350 Legend caliber. I do have a, an AR chambered in 350 Legend and I am just curious the difference that uh, barrel length will have on velocity. So that was 2208, 2219, 2218. We got an error on that one. And an error on that one. All right. Well, we at least got three of them. So I should have said before I did those uh, chronograph uh, results with the rifle, what I'm shooting is it's a Hornady American Whitetail 170 grain soft point. I'm shooting those because that is what that rifle has shot the best. It sh that rifle shoots these sub MOA at 100 yards with real regular reliability. So we were getting well, we got 2209, 2218, 2219. So our average, I'm guesstimating, is around 2214 or so ish out of a 20 inch barrel. So this is a seven and a half inch barrel. Let's see what kind of a uh, drop in velocity we have. 1671, or I'm sorry, 1571. 1519 1586 1531 1586 1549 now we got one round left might as well 1558 so i mean we could we could run the math run the numbers and figure out exactly what our average is but it's right around 1550 down from just a hair over 2200 so it is a significant uh, drop but i'm gonna go do some math real quick and tell you what that means in foot pounds of energy all right so before i do any more shooting i want to address something that i probably should have addressed earlier in the video because there's probably a lot of you out there that don't know what the 350 legend is this is the 350 Legend round. These are the 170 grain uh, Hornady American Whitetail soft points that have shot so well in my rifle. 
Well, this was developed a couple years ago and the intent was mainly for states that have regulations that say they can only hunt deer with a straight walled cartridge, not a bottleneck cartridge. And most of the straight wall cartridges that were big enough for deer were almost like too much because we were talking like 4570, 444 Marlin, uh, 450 Bushmaster. Not that those aren't effective at killing deer, but they're, they're pretty heavy recoiling guns. Um, the ammunition is pretty expensive. Whereas the 350 Legend shoots fairly inexpensive ammo and is still more than enough to kill a deer. And what it is, it's very loosely based on the 223 cartridge ish there's some minor differences but it's almost like a 223 that the neck and the shoulder have been straightened out on and a lot of people say it's a 357 bullet in it but it's actually a 0.355 and if you know what that means uh or if you're a reloader you'll know that the 0.355 is actually the diameter of nine millimeter uh whereas a 357 diameter is 357. So it's actually two thousandth of an inch smaller diameter, which isn't much. It probably aids a little bit in extraction in an AR type rifle, because this was made to have the full size cartridges fit in an AR magazine, so it could be shot of an AR, like the one you saw me shooting earlier. And uh, I, I often, I've thought a lot, once I found out I was gonna be getting this revolver, I've thought a lot if maybe this was Smith & Wesson's attempt to kinda, uh, kind of get their reboot their x-frame because the x-frame has been around since 2004 they came out with the x-frame for the 500 smith and wesson magnum and then like the next year came out with 460 smith and wesson magnum well that's the only two calibers that this this frame has come in in 17 years and so i wonder if the x-frame sales are down and this was a way to kind of reboost the x and that's just speculation my point it may not be the problem at all they may still be selling the absolute crap out of x-frame revolvers i i really don't know uh but i'm just glad that they did come out with a new caliber in the x-frame i'm a big uh fan of the x-frame calibers and guns i do not have a 460 um, i'm hoping to change that uh eventually but I've got the 500 uh, Smith & Wesson Performance Center model, and I've got the uh, 350 Legend, so I need that one in the middle. But let's see how these 170 grain actual hunting rounds do out there at 60 yards. That seemed like that shot tremendously higher, but it is a heavier bullet. Okay. So my first shot was high. I adjusted down, my second shot was low, so I split the difference on the third shot and hit it. And I think I've got it figured out. Well, I will tell you, even though the chronograph said these are going slow, I, I shoot pistols at this 60 yard target quite a bit, and it seems like it's getting there rather fast. Um, I did forget to share the information from the chronograph, uh, so let me go grab that now that I'm thinking of it, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so there's a formula for figuring out muzzle energy. Uh, you have to have a chronograph because it's velocity squared times bullet weight divided by 450,240. So with the 170 grain Hornady American Whitetail uh, soft point in both guns, in my, my AR, we were actually getting 1,850 foot-pounds of energy. That is pretty tremendous. Um, for such a small round to be delivering that many foot-pounds of energy on target is pretty stinking amazing. Uh, with the 7.5-inch barrel, that was a 20-inch barrel. This is a 7.5-inch barrel. I mean, this is barely more than a third of the overall length barrel-wise. But it, the, the, pistol, or the, the revolver was still getting 907. So yeah, we did drop over half, just a little bit over half of the total muzzle energy or foot pounds of energy um, going down to the revolver. But 907 is still a, a lot. You know, that's, that's plenty. That's more than enough to kill any deer. Um, that's well enough to kill an elk uh, under the right circumstances with a properly constructed bullet and the right place shot. We did lose a lot with that big of a cut in the barrel length, but that's to be expected. So now we're going to try another ammo. This is Winchester 100 and, 
80 grain, no, I'm sorry, 150 grain uh, deer season. And uh, these are a, a ballistic tipped hollow pointed bullet. We'll shoot these at that 60 yard target. All right, let's see how these shoot. Let's see about that eight inch gong. There we go. And uh, just for the heck of it, way out there in front of that gray backstop, don't know if you can even make that out right now. Probably not because you're not zoomed in. On the right hand side of that gray backstop, we've got a hundred yard silhouette, same size as the 60 yard. Let's see if we can hit that one. There we go. I gotta try some of those hundred yard shots. The second one that I missed, I definitely feel like I pulled that one a little bit. So that's pretty fun. I'm gonna load some of the, those up again and see if I can hit that 100 yard target some more. All right, got another moon clip of those uh, Winchester deer season, 150 grain. See, here's what I'm talking, see how pointy these are? And still, like, it's kind of a pain to get them all lined up at the same time. Once you get them started, they pretty much just drop right in. But getting them lined up is kind of a pain because they're so long and the moon clips are so loose to make them easier for loading, but they don't hold them as well. Anyway, let's see about hitting that 100 yard silhouette again. Nice. That was totally me. All right. Well, we're gonna save some ammo for another video. Um, my next video to really find out is this worthy as a handgun uh, or as a hunting handgun, I'm gonna come out with some ballistics gel and I'm gonna bring out as wide a variety of 350 Legend hunting ammo as I can and we're gonna shoot it into the ballistic gel to see if the, the lower velocities coming from the pistol will even get those bullets to actually perform properly as a hunting bullet with expansion and whatnot and see what kind of penetration we get. So stay tuned for that. For my final thoughts, marketing is the ultimate uh, hunting handgun. There's a few things that disappoint me. I wish there was a little more literature talking about the moon clips for people that don't know much about moon clips. I really wish if it's a hunting handgun, it would have had more of a matte finish. That makes a lot more sense to me. I like the look of this finish. Aesthetically, it's very pleasing. It's great at the range, but not necessarily for hunting. The other thing I would say is, why isn't it optics ready? If you expect people to hunt with this, you should have an option of being able to put some optics on it. So maybe make it optics ready. With the price point set on this gun, because I've seen it go on Gun Broker from 1550 on up to 1799, um, and that's not including credit card fees and shipping and everything else. That's a high price point handgun. And I really feel like we don't necessarily have the features to justify that price. That being said, I feel like any misses have been through me. It seems like it's a very accurate handgun. I think the next time that we do this, when we do the ballistics gel and all that, we'll actually also set up some targets at like 50 yards and shoot this off the bench for some real true accuracy testing. Try to take as much of the rob uh, factor out of it as possible. And I, I really feel like this will hold up accuracy wise. So there's some things I really like. There's some things where I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit kind of let down. Um, if it was a much more inexpensive handgun, I want to be as let down, but this is a pretty, really premium price point. I think it's missing some of those premium features that that money deserves. Um, that's my first thought off my initial shooting. I literally picked this up from my local gun shop today. I'm editing this video tonight. This is Friday, August 26th. As long as uh, YouTube doesn't screw with me on monetization and getting review, it'll be live tomorrow, Saturday, August 27th trying like hell to be the first one to get an actual review out of this gun. I like it. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. There's some things where I feel like Smith & Wesson dropped the ball. Um, 
but overall I think it's going to be a pleasant experience. Uh, make sure you've got notifications turned on and you're subscribed so when I do the accuracy and the gel uh, block testing with this gun that you get the notification for that and all the other videos I put out. Um, doing these kind of videos are quite costly and I'm a rather small channel so if there's if you would like to help out I've got a link to my Patreon down below but don't feel obligated in any way shape or form. All I ask is if you enjoyed the video and you felt like I put forth good effort into making you a good video that you subscribe if you haven't subscribed before, turn off the notifications, and maybe share the video with your friends. It would mean a lot to me, and I'd really appreciate it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.